from English into Spanish. Uh, and so um, uh, if, you need that, uh, if you need that service, please let me know and I'll direct you. Uh, uh, we had uh, before us, uh, while we were waiting, uh, a series of slides that outline the historic marches that are taking place here in San Antonio. And so we just want to uh, recall and remember all of the work that has come before us that has helped us get to where we are today, to help us win those rights that we have today and that we enjoy today. Uh, this is a lot of folks uh, coming together to uh, express themselves, to have access to, you know, have their voice heard. And so what we're doing today is making sure that we protect that, especially in these times where um, it seems like we're under threat. Our communities are under threat um, at every turn. And so we want to make sure that we protect that and that we come together as a community to, uh, to organize, to communicate, to share stories, and to, um, is to, and to make sure that, that um, all, everyone's voice is, is heard. Uh, and so that's how we're going to progress as a community. Out of San Antonio, uh, you know, large community. So, um, with that, if you would put up the, the agreements, Gianna, uh, in, in just a second, we'll go over the ground rules for today. Essentially, we just want to make sure that um, folks don't talk over each other. Um, if you do have your cell phone, if you'll just make sure that um, you uh, put it on vibrate or um, silence it. Um, I do want to um, just make sure that today we do we are able to um, get through our agenda. Because today, at the end of our session, I want to make sure that people are ready to uh, organize in their city council districts. We've done a lot of research to look at different ordinances from across the country and across the state. And so all of that information is ready to go. However, what we need are people to inform the council <coughs> And they are going to be the ones that are going to decide this ordinance. So if nothing else, you know, we get done today after we, we are informed by our history and that we talk about our, our council members and who they are and how we want to approach them strategically, then I just want to make sure that we get together by council districts and that we talk as a, as a small district community how we're going to organize and how we're going to influence our council. So that will be the goal for today. So I want to make sure that we have enough time to get to that. But I'd like to make a comment, uh, just to remind everyone, we had a really good response from the city council at the last meeting about this ordinance. Huh. Very favorable all around. Yes, yes, at the governance, at the governance committee meeting. And we'll go through that in the timeline before we before we go on. Uh, so uh, if you'll look to the agreements and the oh, yes, 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 yes. So, um, so today for sure we will be um, hearing from, uh, from folks um, that are going to talk about the history of some of the major protests here in San Antonio uh, that, that have happened and, uh, and how they were organized. And secondly, then we'll also talk about how do we strategically target our city council member and then we'll get dig into the, the council member uh, organizing, organizing by council district themselves. And we'll talk a little bit about the strategy to do that. Uh, so um, what I'd like to do right now is just to also say that we have been speaking to a lot of organizations. And a lot of organizations have uh, signed on uh, in support of the uh, Free Speech Coalition. And so um, the Free Speech Coalition, it consists right now of 24 organizations. So I'd like to give ourselves a round of applause. <laughs>
Texas Organizing Project. And uh, 
even threatening us with arrest if we use the bullhorn. But that didn't stop anything. We brought the bullhorn, we used it anyway. And so our, our whole thing was, well, if you want to arrest us for having bullhorns, go ahead, we're not going to stop it. And sometimes in order to protect the First Amendment, you've got to challenge it, you've got to test it, and you've got to sometimes suffer the price for whatever, whatever it may be. Well, we were never arrested for the bullhorn, and to this day, we'll still use the bullhorn. Um, and most recently, the, the Black Lives Matter uh, affiliate, through SATX, uh, actually did a die-in, and uh, one of the last ones was the King Marches, um, wow. and, and that was well done. I had to intervene between the police and them, and even some of the people connected with the march, who in my opinion, don't understand the First Amendment, uh, tried to prevent the, 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 the uh, Black Lives Matter people from doing the dying. So I, I got right in the middle of that and uh, turned into a shadow man between me and the police, and then later on, me and one of the people that's connected with the Martin Luther King Commission. So there's always this attempt on the part of the city and the others to try and water down, diminish people's input into such an important event. There's never been any kind of rules that prevent people from bringing forth their ideas, whether it be free Mandela in the past, or, or be it protect the rights and, and the, the humanity of the LGBTQ community. So that's not going to stop in my mind, and, and I don't think any of the marchers should ever adhere to any kind of restriction <coughs> on all those things. So, um, that's very important. Also, um, in, in this day and time, we have to be wary, wary of a couple of things. There's always all kinds of groups that are not connected to your group or my group. Um, and by, my group, by the way, is the SNCC SNCC Legacy Project. And Jolene, I'll, I'll have a meeting today and I'll bring up one in the coalition right, as soon as I be here. But, um, so, there's all kinds of groups. And, and every group does what they think is right. And uh, if you were in control of your group, then if it's a mass demonstration, you always can't prevent people that you may not agree with showing up. But if it's something you're doing that's specific to your group, you can have some control over that. So you gotta, gotta keep that in mind. Um, so, and, and let me tell you, I, I, I thought it was very interesting because the Antifa group that came to our rally, and the rally that was being held at Travis Park was called by SATX4. But it was joined by our group and a bunch of other groups. Travis Park Methodist Church was there. Uh, First Unitarian Church was there. So all these other groups joined in uh, and weren't afraid to be associated with the Black Lives Matter, Matter group, which I thought was, was very significant. But you also you had the, uh, the anti-fascist group show up. And it was kind of interesting how that turned out because we never advocated going to the other side of the park because that would just we felt increased the likelihood of violence, but it didn't stop them from coming over to our side of the park trying to disrupt what we were doing. Now, the, the anti-fascist group, contrary to some of the ones, the way that some of the ones act upstate, this one was pretty cool, I thought. What they would do was confront, confront the Nazis and the neo-Confederacy from coming to our side, and they confronted them so strongly that the police had to get in between the two and the police inadvertently wound up helping us because they, they wound up telling the Confederates, hey, you need to go back to your side of the park. So after a time, that, that it turned in the other direction because so oftentimes when you have these anti-racist demonstrations, the police often side with, with the racists. And so that kind of didn't happen. It almost happened uh, on a couple of occasions. We had one arrest, which is a miracle, uh, just to have one arrest considering the, the, the uh, the likelihood of that. Now I must say, from a historical point of view, that the level of the possibility, probability of violence has increased greatly since the election of Donald Trump. And because of that election, and because of Steve Bannon, and because of the ultra-right uh, input into the presidency, then they think they have a green light to do whatever they want. So in Texas, they come open carry, they come intimidating, they stood in front of City Hall, open carry, they've been sending threatening letters, and pictures of people placing bullseyes on, on Black Lives Matter groups, also sending people with guys with AR-15s or AK-47s, whatever they have, uh, and posting them on people's websites. One thing that I've advocated is those photos and pictures and those names need to be turned into at least four different groups of people. One, turn it into the SAPD, turn it into the FBI, turn it into the Southern Poverty Law Center, which might be better than those two, and then turn it into uh, 
Yes, You're a Racist website because they publish those photos and send them out. And they've been able to get people dismissed from their jobs because no decent employer is going to want a Nazi working for them. So um, that, those are things that we can do at, at the local level. We also warn people to be very careful because these people are very violent, uh, not much different from the days when we were marching. But oftentimes when you know they're there to be violent, sometimes it's best to have a, a counter demonstration in a different location. So you, you got to use your judgment. On the other hand, you have to think that through. Because on the other hand, it may be very important to confront racism head on where it exists. So that has to be thought through. Back in the time when we had the anti Klan rally, we've never opposed the other rally that took place against the Klan. That was a face-to-face -face counter demonstration. We didn't oppose it. We just had one at City Hall so that people who didn't were concerned about their life, maybe their kids or whatever, wouldn't have to be fearful that they, that they could go to pick the demonstration you want to go to. We're not going dis to disparage each other, but we got to do, we got to do what we got to do, and they got to do what they got to do, and the boat went off pretty well without a hitch. So you got to keep in mind that you need to keep the level of disagreement with other groups down, because we do need to be unified uh, against racism, against fascism, and, and against all those elements that really uh, present a problem. And I'm going to stop. And that took place, uh, the anti-KKK rally took place in 1996, which is about 31 years ago. Um, and I know there are several folks that are in this room that were part of the organizing of that. And I just wanted to acknowledge uh, T.C. Calvert um, and allow you to speak on this. Okay, thank you very much. First of all, I think we should give a round of applause to the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center for 30 years of advocacy. <laughs> very significant that uh, people like T.C. Calvert and Mario Salas that we passed a torch to people like Mike Lowe and some of the younger people from the move group who are carrying that torch. Now, as Mario stated, and I'm going to just keep it real here, everybody has a way of doing marches. I'm the technical guy. I'm the guy that makes sure that we have lawyers, on standby, that we have uh, medical teams on standby, that we have the people, if somebody's going to get arrested, check this. If somebody's going to get arrested, we already have that plan, and we already have the people that's going to get them out of jail. I'm just going to get the real with you. So when we did the anti-KKK thing, we had to make sure that, as Councilman Sala said, that we don't allow them to divide and conquer us. So what this coalition has to do, you got to make sure that there's a clear understanding on who's going to play what role. We have one person assigned to talk to the police. Not three or four or five people. We have one person assigned to talk to the police. Now let me tell you how skilled we are in this. We have used Brother Lowe, the police, to intervene on our behalf. That's sharp organizing. When you can get the police to side with you, because in most of these demonstrations now, the police is siding with the Nazis and the racists. So what you want to do is you want to be keen enough, everybody say keen enough, keen enough, to make sure that the police is working for you and not the other side. And I'll do a workshop on that and show you how you can make that turn. We want to be able to flip the script. Everybody say flip the script. Flip the script. We want to be able to flip the script. And we've done it on major issues in Washington, D.C., uh, in uh, uh, Austin, where we have the police actually negotiate for us to win a victory on certain issues. And you've got to be smart enough to do that. With this progressive city council that you have now, I think we can be able to get and move our agenda. I think we'll be able to move the agenda. We have to make sure that you cross all your I's, dot all your T's, that you're shrewd. Because we're up against you. these guys, the Nazis and the Klan, and these people now that Trump has endorsed, these individuals, they're a military operation. Everybody say military operation. Military operation. 
And we cannot afford to have Mike Lowe assassinated or shot at one of these events. We just can't afford that. We can't afford to see any of our people hurt at any of these events. When we start the Martin Luther King March, most of you in this room who are with me, people will call us up and say, Mr. Calvert, uh, can we have the lesbian, gay community come to March? We said, of course, sure. Would there be opposition to it? Long as you stick to your issue. One of the things that I have to criticize a lot of the left groups of is sometimes we lose message. And on this ordinance that we're trying to get passed with this free speech coalition, we cannot lose message. It's one of the biggest things we do. You've got to be focused on message. And we lose message too much. You know what I'm saying? So one of the things you got to do is you got to be clear with your message. Your message has to be so clear that a third grader would understand that. That people, in, and it's not that you're dumping down the people. The reason we've been successful in 45 years is because we're clear and concise on our message. And with this free, free speech coalition, you got to be clear and precise on what you want. And sometimes, we're all over the road. You can't be all over the road with these protests, especially when you're dealing with city council. We need to put together a one-page fact sheet. Everybody say one-page fact sheet. One-page fact sheet. That you can pass out at any elementary school and their parents and the kids would sign off on it. If you do that, you will win every time. You will win every time. Everybody say, you will win every time. Every time. So that's what we did when the Martin Luther King March grew because we were inclusive and we made sure that everybody had a, a, a piece at the table. But you know, if you don't include a lot of the old timers in on the planning, then we're not going to get involved. I'm just going to keep it real with you. We have to feel like we have some ownership at that moment. You have to feel like uh, the Martin Luther King March draws 100,000 people because she let everybody come to the table. Now, one of the things that I think we need to do uh, with the upcoming marches that we have, you need to make sure that you have your own recon and security team. I had a handout. Did everybody get the handout from the 1983 Neighborhood First Alliance put together a handout? And we have, look on the last page. These are some checkoff things that you might want to do. You want to have a food and water team. You want to make sure you have bullhorns. As Sala said, and I'm going to call his name now. Captain Pittman was the one that didn't want us, Mike, to have bullhorns at a march. We almost got into a fisticuff with him. We asked him, well, what the hell are you talking about? We had bullhorns at the march. You got to make sure that your sound system, watch this now. The, the militias that come in here, their sound system is always going to be louder than our bullhorns. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have a sound system that's going to drown them out. And if you get it with me, I can help you on that, but I'm not going to tell you what we got to do to do that now. But you want to make sure you have whistles, at least a box of 100 whistles. So when they start talking, you start whistling, because you can't always shout these guys down. Those whistles, let me tell you, it's like blowing the whistle on. Those whistles are louder sometimes than what they're doing. So you want to have those whistles. Poster boards, bright colors. You want to keep your poster boards clean and crisp. The loud green line ones and the orange ones, they show up better on TV. You want to make sure you have the slogan and your message. There's that slogan. That's talking about the message of what you want. A lot of groups have just got too much. You want to make sure if you're going to have seniors there, you want to protect those seniors. I have Lucille Scott, my second wife, stand up, son. Ms. Scott is uh, 80 years old. Reverend Solis, one of the best stand up Reverend Solis, one of the best talking about this day. 79 still out here on the battlefield. So when you got these kind of people at the march, it also sends a message, bro, go to the police. Because the police know these people. You feel what I'm saying? And they ain't gonna mess with them because they know they're focused. 
So let me wrap it up. But anyway, it's it's very clear. Uh, you know, you got to have the warning fires, pickup location boxes. You want to make sure you have uh, the people that are assigned to talk to the police. You want to make sure you have people assigned, and you got to make sure you have what we call marshals. The Martin Luther King March. We always had marshals on the cover. Mario and I call them the deacons of defense. Now there was a deacons of defense. Brother Harry back in the day in Mississippi, Louisiana. So you want to make sure you have your own security team. Everybody say own security team. Own security team. You got to have your own security team in t-shirts, very visible, and, and make sure that these people help keep the peace. Anytime you want to get with me, my number is 226 9041. We'll be happy to meet with you. It's, we don't have enough time to get into the nuts and bolts today, but I'll be happy to show you how we grew the MLK March and how we dealt with the gay gay family. All right, give it up.
Otra de las ideas fue que organizamos grupos y fuimos a, a, las, a las zonas del North Side, donde veíamos que había construcciones, nos parábamos y les dábamos volantes a los trabajadores. Era un trabajo muy arduo porque tienes que andar por muchas calles dando volantes a los trabajadores. Another idea that we had was that we would go uh, to the north side where a lot of construction zones were taking place and a lot of workers were working and we'd go street by street to pass out flyers to some of the workers and it was an arduous task because it was hot and there's lots of streets but um, we made an effort to reach those workers. Otra de las ideas fue, fuimos a Mission, adentro del free market, porque ahí es donde van los trabajadores, ahí es donde va la mayoría de los afectados. Entramos y a escondidas estábamos dando volantes, pero los descubrieron, uh, nos llevaron a la oficina esposados y nos asustamos mucho. Entonces hablamos con el encargado y le explicamos por qué razón estábamos haciendo esto. Entonces él dijo, bueno, Mejor vengan aquí en la mesa y los dejo y los dejo ir. Another idea that we had was to go to the Mission Free Market and and um, start to pass out the flyers kind of um, without being caught because we didn't have permission to be there. And so eventually they um, the man, the people at the flea market found out what we were doing. They 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 even handcuffed us, took us to the front office. So we had to talk to them and negotiate with them and they. Um, They let us go and they let us put the flyers on the table um, for the people to see. La otra ocasión organizamos grupos con, con personas de la, de la Fuerza Unida. Uh, bueno, fueron algunas personas más voluntarios y nos pusimos afuera de, de la entrada de, 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 del Afri Market Potí y ahí. Como estaba el efervescente el momento de la ley que iba a entrar en ese efecto en ese tiempo, pues la gente estaba toda emocionada y nos miraba a la puerta y se paraban en las trocas, nos agarraban los volantes y llevaban ya muchos volantes para repartirlos. And we stood at the entrance of where of the parking lot where cars come into the to the flea market. And people at that time, because they knew of the, this law coming into effect, they were so um, happy to see them, they greeted them. They even took flyers from them to pass out themselves in their own communities. And that, that was an effort that we worked out. Pero otra de las ideas más brillantes que pienso que funcionó fue que varias uh, compañeras, porque ya estaban empezando a organizar el grupo de domésticas, uh, nos arreglamos muy bien, nos pusimos como para ir al baile, nos pintamos, nos peinamos y nos fuimos a todos los salones que se nos atravesaban, que sabíamos que habían bailes. Fuimos, entraron en la puerta, le pedíamos permiso al, al, a los encargados y nos daban permiso de entrar. Well, one of the most brightest ideas that I feel like we came up with, um, and that was at the time that we were starting to organize domestic workers, was that we got ready and dressed as to go dancing, and we started to go to the nightclubs, where we know that some of our, our people like to, to go at night. And so we would um, stand outside of the nightclub as people walked in to pass out um, literature and flyers also. Entonces, había algunos en los bailes que decían, ¡Uh, sí, esa ley, que la raza le va a afectar! ¡Pásenle, pásenle! Y nos dejaban pasar, después llegábamos al stage, ¿verdad? Nos estaban tocando el grupo, le explicamos lo que estaba pasando y nos, nos jalaban, nos levantaban y nos subían arriba y nos daban el micrófono y entonces nos ¡Eh, raza, somos ta, ta, ta! ¡Vengan, esta ley les va a afectar! ¡Vengan! Y les dábamos muchos volantes, nos dejaban ahí a, a dar el mensaje And so what was wonderful was that they even, they, they allowed us to come in and we took the stage and we took the mic and even the people, the bands playing, you know, um, gave us the stage to promote our message and we were able to rally our people. To, 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 
Algunas veces unos no nos dejaban entrar. Eh, decían, no, 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 porque se van a quedar en el baile. Decían, no, nos vamos a quedar en el baile. Mira, este es el mensaje, esto es lo que pasa, déjanos entrar. Porque te voy a decir una cosa, yo les decía, si tú no promueves esto, se van a llevar a toda la raza y te vas a quedar sin clientes. Bueno, eso era lo que eso fue mucho, mucho de lo que pienso que ayudó, porque llegamos a la raza a la que iba a estar afectada, a la que le importaba, a la que tenía que salir. Y fue, yo me acuerdo que cuando iba caminando en la calle, marchando para la, para la marcha, que eran miles, 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 llegaban, venían con la ropa sucia de la construcción, los zapatos, sudados, llenos de polvo, pero venían emocionados, contentos, porque venían a la marcha, porque venían a defender sus derechos. The 
uh, Coalition for Racial Unity. And then in 2006, 10 years later, we had uh, the immigration marches. And you saw how uh, deeply folks had to go to reach the workers and to reach all of the participants. And that was one, one of the largest marches um, uh, that I had seen of, um, of, uh, of immigrants and of community out in San Antonio um, marching for justice. How many folks were there at the 2006 March, uh, immigration marches? And wasn't it incredible? Wasn't it like bringing you to tears kind of uh, joy to see all of that? So it, it was amazing and I want us to continue to be able to have that kind of outpour of support for our community. And so that's why we're here today. We have to make sure that we maintain the ability for our uh, communities to organize around issues that they care about that are going to affect us. And so um, what we're going to do next, uh, what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to talk about how to organize uh, by your city council member because I want to make sure everyone got this sheet of paper. It's at the entrance. In this sheet of paper, it shows you the, the way the ordinance is now and the way we would like for it to be. So we're gonna propose some changes to the current ordinance because right now, uh, in general, the current, or, current ordinance is one of the worst. One of the worst uh, with regard to fees that they charge our marches, the accessibility of the application, and the insurance requirement. So they are located up there at the sign-in table. If we need to run some more, um, we'll have someone run some more and we'll pass them back out in just a minute. Okay, um, so we'll go ahead and, and make some more and get them out here. Uh, so just to kind of give you an overview, we did research and we found out that, it, that our current, current ordinance is one of the worst. And no other place in Texas except for Houston did they require that you get insurance for your march. Now, what insurance company is going to insure the, uh, the anti-Confederate, uh, the anti-white supremacy uh, rallies that we're, that we're hosting? So all of those, if they require us to do that before we get to organize ourselves, then they're gonna effectively end you know, our ability to, to organize and have our voices heard in that way. And we don't want that to happen. So we want to make sure that San Antonio has the best and the one that is most protective of free speech. Uh, and so we went ahead and did that research. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Amy and Gianna, and uh, I know Cassandra is not here, but there are other folks uh, that have participated. Michael, Michael uh, yes. And so other folks that participated in that, and I, I, I want to say that this work has been, um, has been done by many folks. And so um, right now the application process is very convoluted. Who knows where to go to get the permit? Uh, if you don't know right now, it's gonna be hard to organize your march, but you have to go, you have to go to a certain office. You have to go to the police, actually. And um, so many uh, individuals, so many groups are intimidated to go to the police to, uh, to go and protest police brutality, for instance. And we're going to protest uh, an issue where we feel targeted and where our, our communities are vulnerable and we're facing deportation, then how are we going to go to the police to go and request a permit? And the police then get to tell you, this is how many police officers you need on duty, off duty police officers, this is how many barricades you need, and this is how much it's going to cost. And guess how much it costs? Anybody organize a march here knows how much it might cost? Ten thousand, eleven thousand, twelve thousand dollars. Now, if you're a free, free, uh, free speech uh, protected um, issue, they'll they'll knock the first three thousand dollars off. But uh, that leaves you with about seven thousand or more dollars that you still have to pay to organize your march. And so they will require that you put somebody's name down and that bill will be under that person's name. And right now we still have folks that owe the city thousands of dollars because of that. Um, and so we don't want that to stand. And that's why we're here today. So um, we wanna make sure that before you leave, everybody has this, the comparison of the current ordinance versus the proposed ordinance. There are other details on here that we will work through, um, but in, in, you know, in general, 
we just want to make sure that folks know that we're here to change this ordinance and we want to make sure that free speech is protected. So I'm going to turn it over to our next two speakers so that we make sure to get to the part where we organize ourselves to pass this ordinance. And, um, and so we have today uh, the Honorable Elena Guajardo, um, former District 7 Council Member. And we also have Drew Galloway. We also have Drew Galloway from Move San Antonio. Uh, they're both going to speak about targeting the City Council um, to make a change in, you know, in, in, in laws that are affecting us. So I will pass it over to you. Thank you so much for having me today. My name is uh, Andrew Galloway, I'm the Executive Director of Move San Antonio. Um, we're a uh, nonpartisan nonprofit focusing on getting young people involved in politics right here in San Antonio. Um, and so today we're talking about power. And uh, power is defined as the ability to act. Um, and within our organization, we have a saying that, that goes, organizers, organize. Say organizers organize. So what that means to us is that in order for us to exert some type of power, we have to plan for that to happen. Um, and so today what I want to talk about is who's on the council, um, their sort of tenure and where they're at, and then the importance of organizing by council district. So what's coming out to you right now is a flyer We've done all of the early organizing for you. Uh, we've given you uh, the councilman or the mayor's name, uh, what district they represent, who their chief of staff is, who their policy person is, what their direct line is in the city council, and their Twitter name. And so, um, so what we want to talk about today is you've got who's on council right now. Um, you know your city council person. If you don't know your city council person, raise your hand. We'll help you find them afterwards, okay? If you know your city council person, circle their name on the sheet right now. At the very top, circle the mayor's name. Congratulations, those are your two projects. Uh, okay, so... Um, Ultimately, those are the people you want to talk to. The mayor represents all of us. Your city council person represents you. You live in their district. Um, and so looking at who's on city council, um, where the ordinance is right now is it's in governance committee. So pull out your sheet again, put a star next to um, Shirley Gonzalez's name, put a star next to Ray Saldana's name, Put a star next to Anna Sandoval's name, Roberto Trevino, and Rebecca Villagran. Those are all your second targets because they're on the governance committee. The governance committee meets the first Wednesday of every single month at 11.30 in the morning. Repeat those names again, please. Absolutely. That was Nuremberg, Gonzalez, Saldana, Sandoval, Trevino, and Villagran our governance committee, okay? Um, they're the ones that are gonna deal with this first. They're, they're the ones that are gonna say, okay, um, what's coming back from the city attorney is like red stamp and heading towards the council. So those are our first targets and Elena's gonna talk, talk about that process. But those are the folks that you can talk to as well. Um, so you wanna target your city council person first the mayor second, because they, he has to listen to everybody, and then all of these governance committee people are third, because they're dealing with it right now. Um, I'm gonna talk quickly about uh, tenure for everybody and how to leverage power on them. Um, so we have a lot of new council people on, on the council right now. Um, the mayor uh, served on council in 2013 and 15, uh, and has now been reelected uh, for mayor now. Uh, Roberto Trevino uh, has served 2015 and was reelected. Um, Councilwoman Villagrana has been on the council since 2013. Uh, Councilman Saldana, even though he is the youngest councilman, is the veteran on council. He's been on there since 2011. He is not up for re-election, so uh, you, you're going to want to target him differently than all the other council people. Um, and then uh, 
Councilwoman uh, Gonzalez has been on since 2015. Everybody else is brand new. Um, so they've only been on the council for a couple months. They're still learning. Um, so you're going to sort of have to ease them into, into how to lobby them. Um, but the others sort of know their way around. Uh, Councilman Saldana is not up for re-election, re so he's doing things right now that are passionate to him because he doesn't necessarily need our vote the next go around. Um, so he's doing things that matter to him. So use emotional uh, calls to action for him. Okay, um, so uh, there's not a ton of votes to talk about voting history, um, but there are some things that have come up that signal to us where they might fall on sort of the scale of progressive to conservative. Um, SB4, Saldana, Villagran, Sandoval, Trevino, Gonzalez were all supportive of moving into and Nurmer into, uh, into that uh, lawsuit. SB4 is the uh, state law, show me your papers, uh, you know, like pushing uh, power uh, to the police to enforce immigration law. Um, and the city of San Antonio has sued the state of Texas um, over that. And so those, those uh, council people were supportive of that action. The Paris uh, Climate Accord and Climate Action Plan is being currently led by uh, Courage and Sandoval. Uh, the equity lens for the budget, if you're, the budget is ongoing right now, the council people uh, sort of like pushing the equity lens view is Nuremberg, Sandoval, Saldana. Um, right now there's some pushback from Rockhouse and Perry on that, on that strategy. Um, and then for the Confederate monument, uh, the CCR was filed by Trevino and Shaw and signed by a couple others as well. I can come around to the, when we break out in the workshops and give and give you specific information on your council person. Um, so uh, so yeah. Um, sorry, I'm I'm super quick on time. Um, but uh, let's see. So importance of organizing by council district. You are going to want to talk to your council person. Why 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 is that? Because you're a vote in 2019 for them. Okay, um, so if they run for office again, they're going to want to hear from you um, now throughout the term, and then they're going to want you to vote for them, okay? So um, the importance of, of doing that is, is really, really uh, important. And playing off of what Mr. Calvert said, um, the messaging is really important on this. Um, because what's happening is that when you call this office that we gave you the, the number, and you're going to call and talk, you're going to ask for... Councilwoman Sandoval, and then when she says, they say she's not available, can't take a message, you're going to ask for Mr. Ruben Lizalde, and they're going to say he might not be available because um, he's the chief of staff, and then you're going to say, can I speak to Mr. Garcia, and then they might say he might not be available, um, and then, then they're going to ask you to leave a message, and so when you leave that message, everybody in this room needs to be saying the same exact thing. Um, because what it does is it signals to the staffers internally that they're that you're part of this coalition, that you're you're a much bigger group. Um, and so Elena's going to talk to like how to communicate that, what the role of staffers are, um, and that kind of thing. But ultimately, you're you're sending uh, like a beehive signal that you're a member of the bigger beehive. So that's why like the talking points, the messaging, all of that is so important. Um, if you do get to talk to uh, Ryan or, or somebody else at the chief of staff, you repeat those same talking points because it shows that you're, that you're not reading this in the newspaper and just calling in, that you're part of the bigger coalition. And when they get 20 phone calls like that, then like, you know, the wheels in the office grind to a stop and they're like, what's happening? So, um, yes? Do we have a platform for these bullet points? Is that something that we're going to go over later? Yeah, I think we um, so I'm going to pass the mic to the um, Can you hear me? I am very excited at faces I recognize and know, and a lot of faces I do not know. So that is truly exciting. And whenever I'm in the room with T.C. Calvert, I'm in church. <laughs> And so, I want to take a moment and ask, who has ever gone to speak to a city council person or a mayor? Could you raise your hands? Thank you for your advocacy. 
And so, we have some new faces in the crowd and new bodies. So, if you would allow me a moment of personal privilege, we are now in church. Okay? And from one nun who did this to me, we are going to do it to each other. So, if you would lay your hand to the person to the left and right, if you, if you could. We're all just going to be a body of advocacy. And so you will say to the person next to you, left and right, I anoint you to be an angelic troublemaker for the Free Speech Coalition. Amen, amen. We are teaching. 
the message of the Free Speech Coalition, where it's been and where it wants to go for equity in San Antonio. So just saying, I'm a teacher to break it down. Um, you'll tell the secretary, et cetera, this is the issue I'm speaking on. And that's where the consistent, well, I'll get to that. You'll tell them how many people will be coming to your meeting. That's important because if it's two people, it can be the small room. I'm bringing 10 people. They have to have a larger room for you. Okay. Thank the secretary or the staffer who's taking the notes and for making the appointment. Provide your name and phone number because things can shift on a schedule and you want them to know who you are so they can get back with you. And before the conversation ends, confirm the date, the time, and the location. Because it could be downtown, or it might be in the field office. So you don't want to be in the wrong spot. Okay? So now we'll move to during the visit. So basically, you're an ambassador for the cause. We've already anointed you. Okay? And your purpose is to teach the council person or the staffer about the issue and present the ask. This is very important. You leave with an agenda action plan. And I quickly will tell you a story. When I was on council, a person that represented the, the Chamber of Commerce came to me and we had the anointed the time frame and whatever. And I sat and I listened to her, listened to her, listened to her. I used to teach social workers how to do this. So I'm rolling in my head, you know, okay, tell me what you got, tell me what you got, tell me what you got. She told me everything about the chamber and everything, and she left about ask, giving me an ask. And I went, you just failed. <laughs> A pivotal moment to tell me what she wanted. I didn't, I didn't say anything to her, I went, okay, next person I need to talk to. But I'm telling you, you go and you end with an ask. That's why you're there for. Impressions can make or break the appointment. They have never seen you perhaps before. Many of them have seen Drew, okay? But for a lot of us, they've never seen us before. So how, what you wear is important and how you speak is important. My mama and daddy taught me you can get more of a honey than with us. So remember to be polite, be courteous, but you can be firm in your acts because you're teaching it. So you want them to be open to your message. Introduce yourself and the district you represent. Because as when I would teach, I would say, listen, they win office, they celebrate one day, and the next day, they're campaigning to get reelected. So you are part of the constituency. So if you're if you're going to District 7, who's my district, I would definitely want them to know I'm a voter of your district. You don't all have to be people of the same district, but it is more, it is, it, it wins you more to say I'm in your district because it, it's a personal connection there. Um, you do all the presentation, but this is the other thing I would add. Uh, Oh, while you're there, you thank the council person and staffer for having the time to meet with you. You, cl you clearly state the history and the acts. And explain, and that's what the, the, the sheets are going to give you. Um, a lot of this information because the handout is important because it's a lot of information coming to them at one point. And they're hearing from other sites too, perhaps. So the handout is important. But this is, and I'm going to back tell on, I mean, I'm going to parallel on this, and it is so important, the consistency of the message. Whatever is said to the mayor is the same thing that is said to District 10, same thing that is said to District 3, and on. Because what starts to happen is they go, as Drew said, the pulse is now there, and you see, it's diffused the weight of it is gone. It has to be, if you're gonna ask, be specific, and it has to be uniform across the board. Because when you go to council, or when they're going to council, 
They are now unified in understanding what the message is. If they don't understand, they may ask you questions. They may not understand everything. But if you don't understand something that they're asking, ask for an explanation. And if you can't answer it, and you don't feel qualified to totally answer it, say, excuse me, I will get back with you with that answer. Because really, the truth is important right now. You don't want to scapegoat anything or minimize anything. You want them to have all the information, but let it be genuine. You thank them for the time and offer a contact number and a, phone, a name and a phone number. Because they don't need to call five people, they just need to call one person. In case they have a follow-up, or they have questions later on, or a staffer might have questions later on. Who's the contact person? And this is something that rarely happens, but you can win with this. After the visit, send a thank you note. Very rarely will they get a thank you note and just say thank you for the time that we got to speak to you. If you have any further questions, here's my name and number. You don't understand how much you can win with that. So I'm going to close with my little hand-drawn PowerPoint. And so this is kind of the triangle. And basically, this is what happens. Anyone, let me just say, anyone that's going in person, this is the top. You have the most power because you're one-on-one. -on -one. I see you, I hear you, I get your vibration, okay? Very few people do this. So that's why it's the most important thing in in quantity of power. Definitely, it's like get the wagon trails around this issue. So you start making doing letters. You start doing uh, phone calls. And then emails, because of our social network, more people can do that because of, you know, flight of your home or whatever. I can start emailing. This is the wagon train. So what this whole thing now, and Esperanza does this really good, but there's an issue. Go phone, go call, go email. And then they have people presenting. These are the wagon trails. And the, if you get one conversation, well, it's just one conversation. But if it keeps coming and coming and coming, the staffers notice, the council person notice, and it's like, we have a red line issue. And so you give it the power. Someone's made the conversation, they've made the ask, and you are just continuing to say, this is important. You will not shove this issue to the back wall. The time is relevant, it's coming quickly. So this happens as soon as we get the talking points that gets the consistent message. And you have been anointed as the angelic troublemakers, so this is how we cause the trouble. Amen. <laughs> I just want to, I want to add something to uh, uh, what Sister uh, Guajardo said. Um, everything she said is correct. You are the teachers. And that's the thing that the Neighborhood First Alliance has done. Everything we do is a class. Everything we do is teaching. Um, one of the things we've done where they can't blow you off, Brother Galloway, is that the Neighborhood First Alliance, we make them come to us rather than go to their office. Because when you go to their office, Brother Lowe, they're going to say, well, Brother Lowe, we're out of time. We got called into another meeting. But when you take them on your turn, and you take them out of their experience, it's a whole different dynamic. Brother Harry and I are going to be in meetings this week with us. You think we're meeting with them in City Hall? No. We're meeting with them on our terms. What you got to do, if you want to win this.
this issue, you got to bring them outside to the city hall and all. So, we're about ready to break up in, into our city council districts. But before we do that, I just want to make sure everyone is clear on the points of the Free Speech Coalition and the ordinance. Okay, so um, going on the comparison of the old ordinance and the new ordinance, um, Amy, you want to come up here and we'll tag team. We'll tag team. All right, so if you march on the a sidewalk or, uh, or do a rally, you don't need a permit, first of all, okay? Um, second, if, um, what are the fees for marches in the street? In the current ordinance, the police have a lot of discretion to tell you um, that you need cost, traffic, um, traffic control devices, on duty or overtime uh, police or traffic control personnel, and that you need to clean up the, the march route. It's, we already talked about it, several thousand dollars. What we want is for there it to be less than $100. You should not have to pay over $100 to try to have your voice heard. And even then, we want it to be less um, based on the route that you take. And so, um, you know, that, that's an important point. So we want our free speech not to be, you know, for sale, not to be cost uh, prohibitive. Blocking the sidewalk right now, you can be arrested, detained, or cited for um, discretion of the, at the discretion of the police if you block the sidewalk. They can choose to enforce it or they can choose to just let it go. And we don't, we want clarity. We want to be able to tell our folks, look, um, you know, it will, it will happen or it won't. So we want an exception. If you're doing a march or a rally, we don't want there, you to be under threat for block, blocking the sidewalk. That's what we want. And so, and then why would they, and then they tell you to march on the sidewalk. Uh, and then uh, the noise ordinance. Many people have run up against this. It's at the discretion of the police. They can tell you, we don't want you to use mobile horns, we don't want you to use a microphone and a speaker, a generator. Uh, sometimes they will tell you that and they will restrict your ability to have your voice heard. We want there to be an exception for First Amendment demonstrations that we can. The whole point is to have your voice heard to make an impact. And so uh, we just want to make sure that there's a First Amendment exception for us on the noise ordinance. The permit application office, right now you have to go to the SAPD. This is probably one of the main points of our, of our coalition. We want the power uh, over our demonstrations and marches to be taken away from the police department and the Some place where the community is not feeling intimidated, some place that is not punitive, some place that has harmed relationships with our community. And so we want it to be taken out of the police department and we'd rather have it placed in another department of the city or create a new office so that where we can go to have our free speech um, uh, marches and demonstrations permitted. Uh, then, uh, airport and parks demonstrations. So right now, remember when uh, the Muslim ban came, came out, right? And, and, and folks went to the airport to start protesting. What did they meet at the airport? They met with a lot of confusion and a lot of resistance because you cannot demonstrate, there are clear guidelines about demonstrating in the airport, at the airport and other institutions. So right now, um, and, and for the airports and parks, you have to make a separate application. You have to apply to that department in a separate, in a separate application. We just want to consolidate it, make it clear. If you are ever in this city going to do a First Amendment demonstration, you should just be able to go and do you know, one permit application or just go to one office and not have to go to several different offices and face a lot of different red tape. So we just want to make sure that they consolidate it. And if you've ever tried to do it in a park as well, sometimes they'll make you reserve the park, make you pay for insurance, make you pay for a lot of different um, uh, charges and fees. And so we just want to consolidate it and make sure it's accessible for everybody. Uh, the permit timeline, you have to apply at least 30 days before your march as it stands right now. So when something comes up in, a, in this week that we want to protest, which very well happens, uh, and happens very often, uh, that is just unrealistic. What we're asking for, what we're asking for is a readily available application online with a decision within one day. 
Uh, and um, and what and this is really just to communicate. Hey, in good faith, we're just letting you know that we're going to be here, but we don't, you know, want there to be um, specific uh, barriers to, to our right to free speech. So um, as it stands right now, sometimes it takes up to two weeks to receive an application or longer, and then their decision. They say that it can take it can take up to a week, maybe even longer, to make a decision on your on your uh, free speech march. Just real quick, something we might add uh, to that list, or when we're talking about making the uh, ordinance, what they did for the, uh, at the Travis Park for the uh, uh, anti-racist co coalition rally and, and their rally, uh, was they disconnected the electricity so that neither side could use the electricity. We ought to include that in there too. On free speech uh, rallies, the park should not disconnect the electricity. Yeah, yeah one of the things, let me just add to that too. One of the things on that is we have never, as long as I've been marching 45 years of demonstrations, we've never had to bring in a, a, a gas generator, Brother Jaime, to have sound. And I think that it's uh, disrespectful. We as taxpayers who pay the city police and the park police should not have to pay for electricity in Travis Park. Uh, I mean, any park. So we need to be real firm on that. Well, somebody said, well, the militia, these out-of-town guys, they got a permit. Well, they had access to the utilities, and the SATX-4 did not have access to uh, the utilities. So that's a big issue, and that pissed me off when I heard about that. I got a generator, too, just for the record. <laughs> Add me to the list. Yeah. Uh, so insurance, like I, I said, um, they will sometimes require insurance based on what the police may recommend. That's very arbitrary. We don't want that. We don't think that uh, we should be required to take out insurance to have our uh, First Amendment voices heard. So we want the insurance required removed. Uh, I'll take your question in just a minute. Uh, cooperation with peacekeepers. Sometimes, and what I think is very important, is that we provide our own um, uh, communication and liaison with our our community that is gathered and we want to keep each other safe. There um, is a history, especially in the International Women's Day March, of um, enlisting peacekeepers. And what peacekeepers do is they we know each other. So I may know that I'm going to be very protective of Miss Scott. Uh, I'm going to make sure that she has access to the sidewalks. As a peacekeeper, I'm going to make sure that um, I'm a barrier between her and uh, or any other young children um, or any elders, uh, anyone that I that I know. Of, I'm going to be uh, with an eye out for them, and I'm going to be uh, someone that's going to help keep the the march safe. And if anyone tries to uh, to impede the traffic or interfere with our march, I'm going to make sure that those uh, vulnerable populations or individuals are going to be kept safe. And those are our peacekeepers. Uh, and um, we want to make sure that the police respect our peacekeepers and that um, they don't try to overpower us with their police force. Um, because a lot of times what we feel is, is that our community can, um, can provide our own safety, for our own safety. We also look out for each other in that way. And so um, police right now are not required to cooperate with our peacekeepers. Uh, for, uh, with our peacekeeper group, and we would require, we would like for the police to communicate with our peacekeepers and uh, require that the police do that, and that they recognize us. Um, and then lastly on here is about the responsible party. So if someone goes and applies for a march, uh, we don't want folks that come to our march to be cited at all for any infraction of the ordinance. We uh, would like to, as uh, organizers, just limit the uh, liability that folks in our marches uh, have. And so, um, we would, uh, if any citations are issued, that they come to the source, that they come to the organizers of the march, and that we be responsible as the organizers of the march, and not any one person. Because I don't want any one person in the march to feel like they um, are scared to go because they're going to be cited with something. So I have two hands up. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take her and then Rosie, and then um, and then um, I'll bring I'll bring Amy forward to uh, to add to to it. 
And then we'll take it to the okay. questions. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just wanted to add for the subcommittee that's uh, been working on drafting and uh, proposed ordinance, there are two other points that I would ask you to add to this chart. Um, one is in terms of process, under the current ordinance, Organizers are required to meet face to face with police officers at the police department. Mm. And we want that requirement eliminated. So that the proposed ordinance says you do not have to meet personally with the police. Um, the second thing is under the current, current ordinance, the organizers are required to um, pay a private company for the traffic devices, you know, the barriers and cones and stuff like that. And in the proposed ordinance, we are asking that the city do as is done in other cities, and that is the city lends out its own traffic control devices. They have barriers and cones, and in other cities, the organizers are permitted to go and just pick them up and return them and not have to pay anything for them. So those are the two additional points um, that we have talked about. Thank you. There's big money in the cone and bear thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my question is regarding oh, yeah. speech. And now a speech is spoken word, but also sign. Size and signs are also displays. Because I think in March, right? Yeah, you hear it. I said it. regarding signs and the size of signs. Regarding signs and the size of signs, the signage, I've seen at marches, officers actually object to what they saw and remove them. And you get into a shoving act. I think it should be put in that anything should be allowed. Because I'm not going to get into what's obscene or what's irresponsible or what children shouldn't see. That's not what First Amendment is about. Right. First Amendment is being allowed to speak, so that's my, I think that should be added to your truth. There should be no restriction. On signage, the size, etc., what it says, etc. No, no provision. I'm, I'm an absolutist on that. And Rosie, one more. Daddy, go. Um, I'm just curious. Um, all these ordinances that we're making, how is that going to benefit the other side? Like, how are they going to be able to use all this work that we're doing? To their advantage. Sure. Like uh, well, well, clearly, um, the racists are going to be able to use it. Um, the other reality in this city is that most of the power that's exercised against our communities is exercised in secret meetings. Um, individually with uh, city officials and council members. You'll notice that they don't have to even speak in, in, in city council. Um, so we're, we need to be able to go to the streets to have our voices heard because the other voices, most of the other side, is heard in private meetings. Right. Okay. So uh, I'll take one more question and then we absolutely have to organize my city council district. Who proposed this ordinance and where can we find the actual ordinance? Okay, so who proposed it and where can we find the actual ordinance? I have copies of the actual ordinance. I'll take one. <laughs> Please share. Uh, so, so the, this, this proposal comes from a subcommittee of this coalition that have been working on doing a number of different things, including externs at Via Esperanza that have researched 28 other cities nationwide, and that gave us the ability to make those comparisons that we have in the chart. Um, and then to look at best practices and um, what we know under the First Amendment. Um, I want to mention just one thing, and that is it may be helpful in your conversations with the city, the, the, the word First Amendment, right, the idea of First Amendment events, as the gentleman suggested, what you need, all you need to know is that any expression, in other words, if you are indicating by your actions or your words or your written words, any idea that you want to communicate, that's protected. So it's huge in terms of... You know, few people have marches for any reason other than to express. 
right? So everything associated with our margin is covered by the first year. We will also have a, a follow-up meeting of uh, the subcommittee addressing um, uh, addressing changes to the ordinance. And what I can do, uh, what I will commit to, is making sure that everyone on the sign-in sheet gets a notice for a subcommittee meeting that will talk more in detail about changes to the ordinance and how we came about to those changes and if there are new suggestions because we did add new members of the coalition so we want to make sure we do we do that i have two questions but i do need to wrap up i, I cannot take any more questions because we've absolutely got to got to organize ourselves okay i just want um, to clarify the thing that was just passed out that's not the free speech coalition ordinance that is the ordinance that the city council currently has so what was just passed out was the current ordinance, not the one that we're advocating for. Or the one, that's the one that we want to change. Antonio had a question about the um, uh, why are we opposed to having a face-to-face -face meeting with the police uh, department when we when we ask for a march. And so again, for all the reasons why many in our communities are intimidated by the police, if you're undocumented, if you're targeted. You don't want to go into the police. Not only that, I think I think if let's say for example, how many police would they bring you in front of? The leaders or just one, two, three, four, five? But if three of those police don't agree with what I'm standing for or what you're standing for, then they're, they're gonna automatically have a judgmental view towards you. They're gonna maybe nudge their partner and be like, hey, don't listen to this well, guy. Well, look, look, you know? look, let's keep it real. Okay, we're gonna have to be free. Okay, I will be free. I've been doing this a long time. We never meet with the police with one person. We usually have them meet with our group. That's how we get it done. Okay, cool. But I agree that there's there are problems uh, meeting with, with police officers. Anything can happen that uh, might be difficult situation for our community. Last question. Uh, I have a question for Calvert, PC Calvert. Yes, you said that bring those, bring them to you. Yes, Don't go to their offices. Now. In my community, who are targeted right now, even if we ask them, they won't come. Well, what we could do is we could set up a neutral location because you're being targeted and have them come there. So, you know, you got to be creative and organized. They Organ don't come. We've tried everything. Well, have someone else set the meeting up that may not be a non-Muslim. Have one of your Jewish friends set up. Have the Free Speech Coalition set up. Have the Esperanto set up. We'll meet with us, so let us say it. To me, it's clear. It's clear that uh, that everybody has a different experience, and we want to advocate um, to make sure that, especially populations that are targeted, all of our community gets access to um, having their voice heard at council. So, if you have to go to the council member's office then so be it, you will go to the council member's office. But everything else that we talked about should stay in place, about the message, about making sure folks are calling the council district because it'll, have, it'll be different for each council member and for each community member and for each organization. But as you know, diversity is, is our strength. We all come from different angles. And we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to approach different situations, especially all the different many council members that there are. Um, right now